Right, so we just mentioned there that the budget date has been set, March the 6th. Yes. Was there much debate in, uh, in, in Treasury about where that was going to be? Were you influencing it with the Chancellor? I think it's a pretty standard date, to be honest. Uh, so it has been set, I think, you know, this was something that obviously the Chancellor decides, but it's pretty normal if you look back over a number of years of budget dates. And uh, I, I ask, because much debate now about when the election date will be, of which course. is your which other... The Prime Minister has now answered. Which is, well, not really, it's your other boss's uh, realm. But is there discussion in the Cabinet about this? Or is it really he's the only one that knows? No, that is the Prime Minister's decision. It's his prerogative. And as so to you whether... guys are in as much of a grey area exactly what he meant by saying probably the second half, but didn't rule out the first half as, as, as we were. Well, I mean, I think we all now understand that the working assumption <laughs> is that the election is going to be in the autumn. There we go. Working assumption is, is, is all we can get on it. So let's, uh, let's talk now uh, about uh, taxes. And, and clearly you found the headroom to deliver a national insurance yep. uh, cut that's coming into force this weekend, uh, as well as some business relief, the, both of those announced in the autumn statement. Do, do you hope that that is just the start, the tip of the iceberg, and quite a lot of tax cuts to come? Uh, yes, we hope this is the start of a process. Obviously, it will depend on the fiscal situation at the time. We will only cut taxes where it is financially responsible for, to do so. But we've had a really tough time as a country in the last few years. We've had the recovery from COVID, the war in Ukraine, which has pushed up energy prices. We've had to pay back our COVID debts, you know, £400 billion of spend during COVID and then £100 billion last year. But because we have managed the economy responsibly, uh, because we brought inflation down, we are starting to see things turn a corner. Uh, and because of that, we are able now to cut taxes like national insurance, mm -hmm. uh, which is a tax cut for 27 million people uh, across the country, which is very good news. Um, I, I wonder what the scale of the ambition on tax cut is. The, 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 the tax burden overall will hit 37% this year. Uh, it's the highest since the 1950s. It's up 4% just on this parliament. Yeah. And the, the Chancellor said something interesting yesterday is, I can't get it back to where it was in 2019, four percentage points lower immediately, uh, which I hadn't heard him even reference that number yet. I is the ambition over the next parliament to get it back down to where it was in 2019? Is, is that the sort of target? I think when you talk about the tax burden, it's really important that people at home know this isn't an individual's tax burden, this is the overall tax burden, mm -hmm. it includes businesses as well. And part of the reason it's gone up is because we've had to pay back the COVID debt. And if you look at what we've done within that, we've increased corporation tax, we've brought down the rate at which you pay the additional rate of tax. We've really tried to put it on you know, the highest earners and people that can bear the burden. If you look at the average earner, for example, since 2010, they're paying £1,000 less in tax a year because we've increased the thresholds and because of the changes to NICS. So the distributional impact within that is, is very, very different. But absolutely, what we are trying to do is to manage public finances effectively so we can get that tax burden down for individuals. And it is the opposite of what the Labour Party are trying to do. You know, they have got this £28 billion of spend, uh, which they are saying they're not going to do via borrowing. So therefore, it has to come via taxes, which is a huge economic danger for this country. Um, I want to move on and talk about uh, the Rwanda policy. Uh, some documents leaked this weekend raised the question of whether the Prime Minister really believed in the policy when he was Chancellor uh, and the policy was first introduced. In, in particular, the question was raised as whether Rishi Sunak thought the policy was value for money. D does your boss, the current Chancellor, Jeremy Hunt, think the Rwanda policy is value for money? Yes, absolutely. I should also say, like, I do this job now. I'm Chief Secretary to the Treasury. I scrutinise every single piece of government spend. Mm -hmm. It's our job in the Treasury to look at every single item of government spending and make sure, making sure it's value for money. So Rishi, when he was a uh, Chancellor, and indeed when he was CST, was doing that. That's what I'm doing now. That is what the Chancellor, Jeremy Hunt, is doing now as well. But if you judge people by their actions, what we have done is we've introduced a piece of legislation into the House of Commons, which is the toughest piece of legislation on illegal migration ever. Uh, and it's something that has been spearheaded by the Prime Minister. I'm amazed that you said, yes, absolutely, it's value for money, to, to, that, to that extent, because the Home Office admitted in December that thus far the Rwanda policy has cost £290 million for quite literally nothing in return. That, that is not value for money. But as you'll know, we're spending millions of pounds on the costs of illegal migration at the moment in terms of housing but 290 people. million pounds for nothing is value for money. But this is, the policy hasn't come to effect yet. 
You know, well, we're setting up the policy right now. You know, the, the legislation it, hasn't gone to through the, the House point. of Commons. It's not been an effective policy. Yeah, but we've got, you know, it costs money to set policies up. It's not in place yet. And we are spending millions and millions and millions of pounds on housing illegal migration uh, people coming over here, which is, which is just wrong. It's not fair. It's not right. I'm a Kent MP. I see the impact this has had on children's services in terms of accommodation. It, you know, we've got to do something about this. And... In order to do that, we do have to set up the Rwanda scheme. Yes, that does cost money. Uh, but when it is operational, it will have a real deterrent effect. We've seen the deterrent effect that the Albania scheme has had. You know, the number of... Uh, we've introduced a new deterrent scheme for people mm -hmm. who aren't aware at home for Albanians, which means we can return them when they come back over here because Albania is a safe country. That's reduced the number of Albanians coming over here by 90%. We know this works, and that is why we are spending the money to put the I, Rwanda scheme up and to get it up and running. I, I, I get that these things can take time to come into action, but this was announced three prime ministers ago, five home office uh, ministers ago, if I get it right, about a year and a half ago. It's cost £290 million. You, you say that the job now is to analyse what's value for money. Yeah. On other policies, is that acceptable going forward? I, I get it was announced by Boris Johnson, not by Rishi Sunak, but, although he was Chancellor, but... £300 million to not get anything for 18 months. Is, is that value for money? Well, like I said, it's not operational yet. I mean, the National I know, Crime... But, but, no, but new policies that come across your desk yeah. now. Is your job, as you said, Chief Secretary Treasury, to, to weigh these things up. Would you say £300 million on this new policy, whatever it is, completely different sector of the economy, is value for money if it's going to cost £300 million to get nothing for 18 months? But it's not up and working yet. So when it is up and working yet, it, the National Crime Agency is clear that deterrence works. We know deterrence and returns agreements work because of the Albania deal. So when the Rwanda scheme is up and running, if it has a deterrence effect, it will be absolutely value for money. But it is not up and running yet. I hope it will be. I hope it passes the House of Commons and the House of Lords and we can get it into action as quickly as possible mm -hmm. because it is important. And behind this is it's just a fundamental issue of fairness, which is that you shouldn't allow people to come over here and jump the queue. We need to have an orga organised migration system where the government is in control of who comes into this country. I um, wanted to touch on the, the post office scandal. And yeah. uh, I guess my question on this is whether it is a failure of government that it's taken an ITV TV doctrine, a drama uh, to, to sort of get the government, the country acting to potentially try and right the wrongs of the past. Well, I mean, this has been a very long... I mean, it's awful, by the way, absolutely appalling. Um, and you, what you've seen, actually, over the last number of years is a number of very dedicated, by the way, MPs who have worked on all sides of the House uh, to bring this to justice. We've had an inquiry which has been set up a number of years ago uh, and also now a number of compensation schemes which are in place. But it's right, and it's an example of public service broadcasting, that this has got even more attention because of the programme that has uh, taken place. Um, to, just to wrap things up, we were interested to know that clearly you, you want to win this election. Clearly you guys believe that you will. I, I wonder whether the one positive to you, if, if, if you lost, would be the fact that we'd see the first female Chancellor of the Exchequer in, in Rachel Reeves. Would that be something that you would celebrate either way? Um, I don't think that is... Uh, whilst I... Very much like Rachel, I'm very uh, keen on women in public um, uh, in public positions. I think we'll be fighting every single day to ensure that doesn't happen. But but but, <laughs> I mean that's a that's a very good answer to be honest. I'm not sure where, where I can take that. I guess, I guess if you win the next election and you hope there's uh, many more years to come, it's a job that that you perhaps could fill one day. Uh, I think we've got a very good chance for the exchequer. Very diplomatic on both of these. You should take Sir Nigel Shinewald's position in future. <laughs> <laughs> um, Laura Trop, thanks so much. It's been Thank a real you. pleasure.